This is the Velt Krieg. We're playing the Eastern Front duration game with the Italian duration, the Caucasus duration, Macedonian duration, and the Gallipoli scenario. All active. This is the situation at the end of August 1915. First thing we're going to have a, do, a quick do, a look at is the demoralization tracks. We've got Austria at 366. So still quite a way off their shake and morale at 550. You've got Germans at 401. You've got the Russians at 617. Now the Russians are in a state of shake and morale now. That means that their um, number of supplies has dropped per month from 20 to 15. And they've also... They only get one replacement every month now, not every, every turn now, rather than um, two on odd months, two on odd turns and one on even turns. If we look at uh, what else we got, Bulgaria at 13, Britain at 31, Turkey at 70. And Italy at 48. So there's no one else really close to any problems with their morale apart from the Russians. So we look at the uh, fronts. Caucasus front, very, very quiet. There's going to be an offensive by, well, probably Russians and the uh, Turks next month, but they've been building up supplies and and reinforcements is a very very slow process on here and it, the attacking is is horrendous trying to attack in these mountains it's just not a good idea we go over to Gallipoli the Allies are steadily building up forces around Gallipoli um, but they're not making any progress the Brits had another major attack and it failed um, the Turks have had a, a major attack, which wasn't too bad, but uh, certainly didn't make any progress territorially. It's just a, a similar situation to what happened historically. And we're getting very close to the Macedonian front activating. Uh, so this is 2nd of October, right? So it's only a month or so away. Um, I say second, it's the second turn of October. Turks, they're well, gradually sending more and more units from the uh, Istanbul area to the Gallipoli area, uh, bringing in re re reinforcements and replacements, but it's difficult for them to make any progress because this is all entrenched. Uh, there's no heavy artillery available. I think the Turks might have one gun battery, but that's not enough to overcome these defences here, which are, are solid defences. If we look at um, Balkans, Serbian front is obviously over now. Um, Austrian army is the little bits that are in the uh, Serbian area are either garrison cities or they're actually on the Albanian frontier, we've got um, Bulgarian units pretty much passive at the moment um, on the uh, Albanian and on the Greek border. Greeks obviously aren't activated yet, they're part of the Macedonian forces. We've got Serbian forces waiting to rejoin the game in, in the third turn of July 1916. So all fairly quiet there. If we go over to um, Glacier, most of the Glacier in front is very, very quiet. Nothing happening at all. Just miles and miles of trenches with not particularly well held. You know, if you, if you were to attack anywhere along this front, seriously, you'd break through. That's just the nature of the beast in the East. If we... Um, Look at where the actual fighting's going on. There's an Austrian offensive going on here, which has pushed forward and captured a bit of ground. And the Germans have been pushing at the other part 
a bit salient here and uh, they've been they've forced the Russians back a couple of hexes as well so there's movement in that area in central Poland here nothing going on here there is a lot of fighting going on in the uh, Vistula Bend here and the Germans have successfully after a lot of attacks pushed uh, Russians out of this part of the front but they still haven't captured all the uh, Vistula Bend hexes the main reason they're running out of supply you know even the Germans are getting the best supply rate they're only getting in 40 a turn rest of the front uh, very very quiet uh, just loads and loads of entrenched positions same as Galatia they're not very strong positions uh, that if you made a serious attack you would break through here if we go over to the final bit which is the Italian front it's been pretty static in terms of terrain but the Austrians have been launching lots of offensives against the Italians the Italians did one main offensive at the start of the month where they've got get all their supplies in um, didn't gain any ground um, so it wasn't really a huge success but it did uh, it did whittle some Austrian forces down at not too great a cost the, uh, the Austrians themselves have been launching endless attacks at this Trieste hex here to try and recapture it uh, but they've not been not been successful but they've not been losing unacceptable losses compared to what they're inflicting on the Italians so although there's no movement on this front there is quite a bit of activity in terms of fighting so that's it so it's a quieter month um, the effect of entrenched positions and um, the lack of supply which is hampered all all fighting in this particular front is still is still sort of um, making things difficult for both sides I'd say the Russian shaken morale is a, is a major problem and I expect the Russians to start weakening in the next few months so all in all because of the way the Serbians were knocked out uh, this is still going the way of the uh, central powers and it looks like the Entente are going to lose this unless uh, something radical happens in terms of how the game will progress uh, depending whether I keep going at this at some point we will bring the Western Front in and bind it into the game um, but that might be a bit more difficult than I think uh, but anyway that's a possible future thing so the uh, Western Front and the other inactive Turkish fronts are actually now upstairs um, they're not set up but they are uh, in a position where they could be brought into the game 